Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to another Super Tease video. And we have entered the tuning phase of the Dragonflight beta, which means there is going to be a lot of buffs and nerfs to classes that could decide the fate and strength of your favorite specialization moving forward into the next expansion. And if you want to make sure that you're staying up to date with all of those changes that are going on with World of Warcraft, so you're always one step ahead of the competition, then do make sure to hit the subscribe button here on the channel as I will be relaying this information and news to you basically in real time. Time, so you'll never be missing a beat and I am currently working diligently to be a great resource for you on my journey and goal of getting to a hundred thousand subscribers and would greatly appreciate your support in that journey one of the biggest changes we've seen other than just classes which we will get to in a moment is that they have announced officially some PvP title rewards for the upcoming solo queue ranked play in Dragonflight and the title as it reads right now is the Crimson Soloist and Dragonflight PvP season one in the top 0.1% of the solo shuffle ladder, requiring you 50 games won on your current fraction in Season 1 which is now the equivalent of your seasonal gladiator rank one PVP achievement, but they will be separated. This still incentivizes you to go into ranked team play as well as solo queue, which I think is a good thing. Uh, I, I think otherwise, if it had exactly the same title, you're removing just kind of like the barrier of having to find teammates. Although it is a barrier, it is also a great benefit. Some of my most fondest memories from World of Warcraft were from pairing up and going with a team for an entire season to try and go for these end of goal um, season rewards. Like those are kind of the best bonds that I've gotten out of the game. So to see that bracket be kind of trivialized if so ranked solo queue gave the same rewards because again path of least resistance human psychology everybody's going to be going after that one. I think that this is a nice middle ground now as to whether or not this is actually a good looking title. We could probably debate a little bit uh, as to that. I'm not sure uh, if this means that crimson is the first season of pvp so we're like crimson gladiator crimson soloist if that's their idea here um i think that makes the most sense really easy and basic to follow and that means that soloist is the equivalent of gladiator uh for this ranked solo play assuming that's the case and i wouldn't i don't know why I wouldn't think that's the case, but we haven't really seen what the name of the season is yet unless somebody in the comments wants to let me know. But let's take a look now at the class buffs um, because as a Death Knight player, you're going to be very happy with what's going on. The first change is that they fixed a bug with Voodoo Shuffle with Troll where the duration of snares and roots uh, was not correctly matching um so this actually might be a big deal considering they've just changed the pp trinket bonuses um maybe troll ends up being a more viable option especially for melee dps that need to deal with a lot of snare effects um, but regardless let's just take a look at the beefy buffs obliterate 15 percent damage increase howling blast 12 percent damage increase plus breath of Cindergosa, 15 percent remorseless winter 10 percent frost strike 20 percent unleashed frenzy two percent strength up from one percent pillar of frost strength buffed to 25 percent and strength per rune spent increased two percent from one percent like doubled on everything frost scythe damage buffed by 15 percent frigid executioner obliterate damage increased by 15 percent and chance to refund two runes increased by 15 percent piercing chill damage taken per bounce of chill streak increased to 10 percent up from five percent i'm kind of wondering how chill streak is going to function in pvp now that it's not a pvp only talent it's either going to be really good or really bad is my expectation because what, what i've seen throughout the history now of you know honor talents getting yoinked into the normal talents is that they get nerfed to oblivion so that they can function in pve and then they're just you just they don't exist anymore in pvp and it's been really tragic so I'm a bit worried about this. Uh, Shattering Blade, bonus Frost Strike damage increased to 100% up from 60. Uh, enduring Strength, Strength increased to 10%, 20% per rank. So I really like that because like right now, there's going to be some big sweeping number changes to try and get everything to where that they where they want it to be. Um, I do wonder where their main focus of tuning is um, because this at the moment has no PvP specific, specific changes. It's just as a class as a whole, which makes me think it's mostly raiding um, and potentially Mythic Plus. And then with PvP taking into consideration and i'm gonna i'm what i'm really looking to as a main pvp player is like what are the pvp specific changes like uh are they going to be nerfs towards pillar of frost strength boost but then buffs to all of their other skills so their damage is more meaningful outside of just their cooldown window which has kind of been pigeonholed for frost for a long time if not a lot of specs in pvp i think that's the main appeal um, of older versions of pvp in the game at the moment with all the players at the moment flocking into wrath of lich king for arena um, and the lessons that could be taken away from those older expansions would be to bring up damage outside of cooldowns and bring damage within them uh, because you know just 
getting one shot every minute and then falling asleep at your keyboard healing through the damage because the damage out of the cooldowns is just so pathetically low is just not an enthralling experience um so i would really like to see that direction when we get to it but frosty k has kind of been an underperformer for some time so it's nice to see frosty k getting some love here in these first rounds of buffs um we are seeing changes to unholy as well uh, Super Strain will now apply Frost Fever and Blood Plague at 80% effectiveness. Um, this includes Runic generated from Frost Fever, which is now 4, was 5. Seems like some nerfs to Unholy. Uh, summon Gargoyle. Damage of Gargoyle increased by 25%, now properly scales with Mastery. Uh, Commander of the Dead. Damage buff for your Army of the Dead Ghouls and Gargoyle increased to 35%. Some buffs as well. Commander of the Dead will now uh, apply to the Ghouls who are already still being summoned in by the Army of the Dead when Dark Transformation was pressed. Death Coil. Oh, we don't like that. Death Coil getting reduced by 15%, at least as a PvP player. I don't like that. Um, Raise Dead, all pet ghoul damage reduced by 10% as well. Uh, death Rot now applies to all enemies damaged by Epidemic or Death Coil was only on your primary target. Scourge Strike damage reduced. Clawing Shadows damage reduced. Fe don't, these are the types of changes, especially on the core abilities that are going to maybe have big implications on PvP, so very concerning. Um, Magus the Bolt, Frostbolt, Shadowbolt damage increased by 100%. This is necessary. This thing literally did no damage. This I don't even know if it'll do damage with 100%. Uh, Unholy Pact, no longer it's 5% strength. That's a big nerf, I think, to Unholy Pact, isn't it? Uh, Rotten Touch increases the Scourge Strike damage by 50% for 6 seconds, was 30%. Um, Ghoulish Frenzy, attack speed and damage gain decreased to 5 to 10%, was 6 and 12 and Coil of Devastation now deal 30% of Death Coil damage over 4 seconds was 35%. So like a little bit of a shuffle. The way that this looks like it's been shuffled is that most of your damage is going into your pets and your cooldowns. Um, which for PvP is not really the direction that you want. Um, but in PvE, this is going to make you probably a really big spiky burst class. Um, potentially competitive. But again, we have to wait until the complete tuning knobs have been through on every spec as to whether or not we see these specs uh, make a big deal. Demon Hunter got a big nerf today, at least when it comes to PvP, is that Sigil of Silence has been moved to Vengeance Tree as a choice node with Roaring Fire. I don't know if this means that it's deleted from the base tree, but Sigil of Silence getting a silence was a big deal for Demon Hunter and Dragonflight. You had like a seven second silence. It was absolutely crazy. Um, so if this is moved and deleted, because it doesn't say it's deleted, um, or maybe you can just get it in both trees, but I kind of feel like it's gone for Havoc. And this is what they were talking about is what they're going to do with crowd control abilities that were returning to some classes. Demon Hunter and Death Knight have probably the big standout ones um, with Blinding Sleet now for Unholy. So I'm not really surprised to see this, but it's definitely something to keep track of because Heavy Demon Hunter was probably going to be the best class in the game in PvP. Uh, when it had a four-second stun, seven-second silence, uh, imprisonment to follow up if the target didn't die in that. Um, so this is kind of a big deal. Uh, for Boomkin, we saw the removal of uh, Furrer and now a new uh, protector of the pack. I don't really know if you're really going to play this ever. Um, you store 10% of your effective healing up to 120% spell power, and then your next Moonfire consumes all stored healing to increase its damage. So, like, you, you're pressing Moonfire so much that you're never going to get this stored up for a big one, and it's like, does it increase the dot of it? If it increases the dot of it, would it snapshot? Is it only the direct? I think it's got to only be the direct damage. Um, and then for Feral Guardian Balance, store 10% of your damage up to 120%, and your next regrowth will consume all of the stored damage to increase its healing. So you're going to get like a big lay on hands effect type of regrowth with this. It's very similar to the Shadow Priest Legendary and Shadowlands at the moment, um, but compete with Nature's Vigil, Heart of the Wild, and Renewal at the bottom of the class tree for one single target heal. Again, maybe in PvP, but I think the, the, the consistent healing from... Uh, Nature's Vigil is probably going to outweigh this. We'll have to wait and see. Um, but Fur was the thing that many Boomkins were complaining about, having to constantly like, weave in and out of Boomkin form to get those four-star surges. Even myself, I'm, I'm happy to see it go away. Uh, but this new one that we're getting is not exactly the most interesting either. Uh, we saw a bunch of changes in nerfs to Boomkin because Boomkin was probably the most overpowered class they'd ever made into the game uh, after this most recent round of changes where you just had infinite astral power and you were dropping star falls forever and proccing infinite incarnation. Um, so I'm not really surprised to see uh, a bunch of changes and nerfs to it specifically for PvE. Um, in PvP, I'm not sure 
if this is going to have a huge implication on it again, like sh shooting stars having less chance to occur is really bad because I really liked the the procking full moon and this is going to directly affect that. Um, so I'm not the biggest fan of this. We saw the set bonuses come out for Boomkin though and I did like them where we're going to get, when we eclipse, we're going to get one free star surge. It's kind of just a good way to ramp up into your burst. Um, so that's really good. But the, the kind of like procking full moon build might be shifting away um, having seen this. Uh, Feral is getting a lot of buffs uh, in this most recent round change. It seems like they're really focusing on the classes that have been consistently underperforming in PvE. I mean, not necessarily PvP because Feral has been, you know, on and off very good. Um, but Rip damage increased by 10%. Ferocious Bite damage increased by 10%. Thrash 25. Rake 25. Um, in addition to the above rebalancing, Shred Swipe, Brutal Slash, Rake, Thrash, Ferocious Bite, Primal Wrath damage reduced by 10%. Uh, so some spells offset for this. Uh, and then Ferocious Bites during Convoke the Spirits hit as if four combo points were spent instead of five, so bringing down the burst of it. Convoke the Spirits damage needs to be tuned down, and the vast majority of Convoke's damage comes from the Ferocious Bites that cast, reducing the likelihood for Convoke to cast Ferocious Bite, which increases the vari variability in the damage of a single Convoke. Um, does in a way that could increase the dissatisfaction of getting a bad one. Uh, this change reduces Convoke's damage by about 12%, but leaves its variance about the same. In PvP, I'm not sure if you're really going to be playing Convoke too much. Um, but in PvE, this seems to be a change that they want to go after. Uh, and then tireless energy, energy recovery bonus reduced uh, to 8 and 15%, was 10 and 20. So it's maybe a bit of a debate uh, in terms of is this a buff or a nerf. Sabertooth, ferocious bite damage bonus reduced to 15%, was 20%. Bleed damage buffed per combo point increased to 5%, up from 4. Again, shifting out of ferocious bite into bleed damage seems to be something that they really want to do. Um, dreadful bleeding damage bonus increased to 20%, was 15%. Frenzied assault effect reduced to 125% down from 150. Tear open wounds effect reduced to 60% was 75. Rip and tear bleed duration changed to 8 seconds was 6. And bleed damage no longer incorporates the effects of Sabertooth's rip damage bonus. Rampant ferocity effect reduced to 20% was 25%. Uh, blood talons effect reduced to 25% was 30. So uh, pretty decent offset of nerfs. Fixed an issue causing damage dealt by rampant ferocity to be reduced by armor. Uh, fixed issues causing double clawed rake to not choose targets for second rake intelligence. So I, I, what I've seen for a lot of like top level Feral players is that they feel like their spec is being modernized. Um, so I don't really know where it's fitting in terms of overall throughput. Like, is it the number one DPS on, on parses and meters and stuff like that? Um, but overall, it seems like it's a very positive consensus that shifting into bleeds, modernizing the way that it gets its bleed damage going with all the other specs, bringing down its ramp, is going to put it in a more competitive position with the other existing specs, regardless of the tuning that we are uh, seen right here and there's a bunch of changes uh, to other classes as well and I'm just curious if any of them were really standing out to me um, we see some buffs to Mistweaver with increased to enveloping mists uh, they're buffing rising sun kick damage by 25% for Mistweaver um, its mana cost is going up they're also buffing tiger palm and blackout kick by quite a lot uh, strike of the wind lord damage has been adjusted that's a weird way of what does that mean adjusted um because it has it's been historically hit very hard uh glimmer of light healing has been buffed and its damage has been buffed um fade rank two removed the functionality is now just part of base uh fade so priest talent tree is getting uh changed around a bit focused will rank two removed discipline and holy passively have the rank two effect we see mind blast damage being buffed for discipline by a significant amount uh talent tree has been rearranged again for shadow dude your talent tree has been arranged so many times at this point uh, and we see a bunch of uh, tuning adjustments made towards Shadow. I do wonder how they're planning on making the capstones of the old god effects uh, competitively viable for Shadow at the moment. And they're trying to juggle in this new mind spiking non void form Shadow Priest. To me, Shadow Priest is like one of the highest risk specs at the moment moving into Dragonflight uh, for either just being a complete flop or absolutely bonkers because they're just going into the engine of the class so much and things are getting rearranged, regurgitated out, pulled out. Just There's so much happening to Shadow that is really tough to call at the moment, but we're going to have to keep our eyes on it as uh, time goes on. We see nerfs to instant poison, not really understood. And I think a lot of these changes that we're now getting to are a little bit more older. Uh, Restless Crew being removed, for example. Um, improved General and Rush. Like these, these are kind of, uh, I've covered in previous videos, these are a little bit more um, dated in overall changes. And they talk about how they're happy with Warrior. Um, the most recent ones being the Death Knight and the Druid, definitely uh, at this point to talk about. 
overall, I think it's going in a decent direction. It's still probably, in my opinion, feeling rushed um, to try and get to the tuning phase, especially with some specs like Shadow with how much they're you know, going into the guts of that class um, to try and get it working, functioning, being fun, having options, and being competitively viable to where I, I would have personally rather seen a little bit of a delay, but of course I'm not the one that makes those decisions, um, just my opinion. Uh, other than that, thank you very much for watching the video. I hope that you've enjoyed today's coverage and update for Dragonflight, and it's got you more curious about some of these specializations maybe that you'd otherwise kind of wiped away with because there's so much going on, and I'm doing my best to keep it all summarized here on the channel. Uh, once again, subscribe to the channel if you'd like to continue to support and stay up to date with the news as well, and I will catch you in the next video.